from sunny St. Leonard's on the south coast of the UK, this is the Keto Woman Podcast. Brought to you by me, Daisy Brackenhall. Hello, Keto Lovelies, and welcome to, well, it's not really an episode, but I will probably have to put it under an episode number. So it's kind of episode number 229. But I'm not joined by anyone other than myself. Basically, I am out of time. But I didn't want to leave you with nothing. I've done that too many times in the recent past. So I thought we could just have a little bit of a chat. I did think about giving you a repeat, but you can always go and listen to an episode of choice if you want to. It did surprise me actually to hear that some people do even listen to the repeats when I put them out. I guess that would happen if you hadn't listened to them before. But some people, Jackie Fletcher, hello, I'm talking to you, even listen to them again when they are repeat of something they've listened to already. Talking of Jackie Fletcher... Have you listened to her podcast, which is called the Fabulously Keto Podcast? And it is very fabulous. She co-hosts it with Louise and they have some great guests on as well as doing some Ask Me Anything, or I guess it should be Ask Us Anything episodes. You might remember Louise from way back when. She's been on Keto Woman a few times, but she was my very, very first extraordinary woman. Jackie and I share a common interest. We are both cold water swimmers and Jackie braves temperatures even colder than I do because she swims in a lake which has got a lot colder than the English Channel over the winter. I think the lowest, well, I seem to remember her having to break through ice at some point, which I have to admit I was a little bit jealous about. But she will probably experience temperatures a lot warmer in the summer. That's the thing with smaller bodies of water. They get colder, but they also get warmer, of course, in the summer. That lake I used to swim in in France used to get very, very warm by the end of the summer. So just a quick shout out to Jackie and Louise and their podcast, Fabulously Keto Podcast. Go and check it out if you haven't already. So what else? I do have a dog attack update. If you remember, I told you a couple of weeks ago, I think, about the attack on Rocket. Two French bulldogs, would you believe, had a real go at him and it was awful at the time. But I did have a conversation just a couple of days ago with a friend of the owner of these two French Bulldogs. And she explained to me that the owner is actually very stressed out at the moment. She's been working with a dog psychologist. Doesn't appear to have been working very well, I have to say. Um, But she's been working with a dog psychologist and trying to get on top of the situation. I think both dogs are rescues, but one in particular obviously has some real problems with aggression. So that straight away really changed my perspective on things because, as you know, well, all of my dogs are rescue dogs, although Bets came from a lovely home, so she almost doesn't count really. Um, But the other two were street dogs and had issues. And as you know, Bucket has had particular problems with anxiety. So, of course, that got in touch with my sympathetic side and of course straight away I thought of Janine because she was the one who helped me so much with Rocket and I suggested that maybe she might be able to help this lady with her two French Bulldogs Um, because of course well I mean pretty well all aggression issues I to be honest I should have thought about it before but they stem back from most likely a fear anxiety type problem. And Janine is so fantastic. I feel really confident that she will be able to help. So, of course, I had to ask her first, but she's agreed to help out. So hopefully, actually, those two French Bulldogs having a go at my rocket might be one of the better things they have done recently, because hopefully it will lead to a solution. And he's okay. He came out of it okay. So all things considered, I hope that that was maybe, shall we look at it, his contribution to helping out a couple of other dogs. And who doesn't want to help out other dogs? 
It's Easter, of course, and I am heading over to Worthing this weekend for a family get together. Well, a mostly family get together. Unfortunately, my sister, who's just had the most fantastic week's holiday in Lanzarote, came home to discover that she has contracted COVID and is feeling really poorly. So unfortunately, she won't be there and her husband and her two boys, of course, won't be there either. So that's a great shame. Hopefully she will have a very speedy recovery and I'll get to see her soon. But other than that, my brother will be there with his family and also my aunt and uncle and cousin and her son. So and I I don't know what what relative does that make him. I can't even try and figure it out. But he will be there and he's a similar age to my niece and nephew. So and I don't think they've met yet, actually. So that's the reason we're all going to get together. But I went shopping today and I'd left it till today because I've been so busy and just sort of chiseled out an hour or two to go and do some local shopping to get a few gifts. And of course, I had forgotten that it's Easter Friday. And in France, of course, as you know, I've been living in France for the past 17 years or so. And They don't do anything for Easter Friday, which is kind of surprising because they're really big on their religious holidays. But for some reason, I don't know, I guess there is a reason that Good Friday doesn't really count. But of course it does in the UK. And uh, so what did I discover? I discovered that the shops that I was going to go to were closed. I thought, well, I, I, you know, I will try and avoid the sort of typical overpriced chocolatey type gifts and I was going to get some planty gifts for the adults and you know things like that but the plant shop I wanted to go to was closed and the florist was closed but what I did manage to get and I had actually planned but I got the last three in the shop were some books some shared books for the two households and then one for Danny my whatever it is, son of cousin, can't figure it out. And it was the last three they had in the shop. It's a really nice thing that happens this time of year. It's called A Town Explores a Book and it's Hastings and St. Leonard's and every year they choose a book, a children's book and all sorts of things go on. If you've seen my social media, you might have seen, I posted a photo of an ironwork sculpture that's in my local park for example and there are some other things that are going on in that park and other parks and around the town all the kids get involved and I I guess it's you know it's an Easter holidays thing but the book this year is the Didacoy by Ruma Godden and I remember this from my childhood it came out I think in 1972 I've got a copy of it here let's have a look Uh, Ruma Godden was one of the UK's most distinguished authors. She wrote many well-known and much-loved books for both adults and children. Um, But the Didacoy, this book, won the Whitbread Children's Book Award in 1972. She was awarded the OBE in 1993 and died in 1998, aged 90. Now, this book, it's quite an important book, really. I'll just read you if you're interested, the back of the book. Despite being bullied and tormented at school, Kizzy is proud of being a Didacoy, a half gypsy, and is happy living with her grandmother and her beloved caravan horse, Joe. Then Kizzy's grandmother dies and her whole world is turned upside down. Soon, no one wants to look after Kizzy and they try to send Joe to the knacker's yard. But Kizzy won't give up, not without a fight. Ruma Godden's classic story is a moving portrayal of the struggles of life for a young Romani gypsy girl and a powerful reminder of the importance of being proud of where you come from. And I might have to read it again to refresh myself of the story, but just reading the back there has reminded me. I do remember reading it when I was a child and enjoying it very much. Like I say, I think quite an important book. So I got the last three copies in the shop and those will be the gifts to the children when I see them. I did also get them a little Easter chocolate bunny 
Um, I think they're Galaxy, my very favourite chocolate, but they happen to have them in orange flavour, which I really dislike. So I felt very safe buying them, knowing that I will not sneakily eat them myself. Actually, I have to say, I would feel pretty confident, even if they weren't orange flavoured at the moment. My new fasting regime has been going very well and has had a really good and positive impact on my mood. I'm feeling quite good. I'm certainly feeling like I'm moving in the right direction. So what else? I do have a few recommendations for you. Now, the first one is a Brit only thing, but it's a soup that I thought I would try and it's very, very delicious. I have a local co-op. I love the co-op. I can't tell you how much I love the co-op and I do I do my big shop when I go and buy the dog food. I go on to Tesco's and I do the big shop there that's just the bulk things. I particularly like Tesco sausages and bacon, for example. So I get the sort of bulk things, sausages, bacon, coffee, cat food, that kind of thing. But I do like to do bits and pieces in the local shops. And the co-op in particular is my favourite And I was just walking past and these soups caught my eye. And I thought, well, I'll have a look at the ingredients because they do look quite tasty. And would you believe it? They're actually pretty clean and nice ingredients. So I thought I would tell you about them because I've tried one of them and I can tell you that they're also very, very delicious. The make is Yorkshire Provender. And they claim to be the home of honestly delicious soup. It's how soup should be made. And I have to say, I can attest to the fact that they are very, very delicious. Now, the one I've tried so far is silky cauliflower and kale with fountains gold cheddar cheese. And it really is pretty tasty. Now, this does have a little bit of potato in it, but that's basically the only thing that you couldn't really shout about being keto. I'll tell you quickly what's in it. Uh, Water, cauliflower, potato, this cheddar cheese, onion, double cream, kale, leek, unsalted butter, chives, parsley and nutmeg. And that's it. And the carb count really isn't bad at all. The carbohydrates are... So per 100 grams, which we always have in the UK, they always tell you per 100 grams. um, And that is... Three grams, we add the fiber to get the total here because the carbohydrate is always net. Um, So three and a half per 100 grams. Now a serving size, I would say, would be at least 200 grams, which is about a cup, give or take, a little bit less than a cup. So that's going to cost you about seven grams total, which I really don't think is bad at all. And very easy very tasty. Really do recommend it. And the other one I have here, which I'm going to try tonight, that's going to be my evening meal, is tomato and red pepper with Wensleydale. This one does not have any potato in it. The carb count is a little bit higher, but not much. One that I think is very acceptable. And I'm probably going to have half the pot, which is about 300 grams, with some cheese. And that's the other thing. They have a very, very delicious cheese in there that I've discovered called Belton Farm Vintage Red Fox. So it also has a pretty cool name. And it's a 16 month matured red Leicester and it is utterly delicious. So there you go. There's a bit of a foodie recommendation. My other recommendation is a book, specifically an audio book. I think it would be a very enjoyable book to read as a book, but the audiobook is fantastic. And Leslie Manville, the narrator, does a fantastic job. She's a very well known um, British actor, and she really does bring something that bit extra that I don't think you'd get from just reading the book yourself. But the book in question is Richard Osman's Thursday Murder Club. Now, the first one, this is the first one I enjoyed. It was a really good listen. But the second one, The Man Who Died Twice, was just sublime. The only criticism I could level at it was that I didn't want it to end. I cannot rave enough about these books. They are just fantastic 
He seems to be a really nice guy. Every time I've seen him interviewed, heard him interviewed, seen him on other things, he just seems to be a genuinely nice guy. And this somehow oozes out of the book. You can really hear the kind of person he is. And the great thing I think about the when you get to the second novel, it's just like he's kind of got into his stride. And you've done that whole getting to know the characters in the first one. So you're just building on everything in the second one. And it's it's just a sheer delight. It's very, very British. It's a very British crime novel, I guess, along the sort of Agatha Christie lines, but obviously very current. But it's very, very funny. I mean, the humor in the second book, I mean, it, there was humor in the first one. But like I say, the second one just really got into its stride. And the Thursday Murder Club, it's set basically in, in an old people's, not old people's home, but a community and these are the main characters. There are four of them. And then there are other characters. There's Bogdan, the Polish builder, and all sorts of others. It's just fantastic. But it had me crying with laughter. I actually spat my breakfast down my front at one point when Joyce, who's the main narrator, was talking about her Instagram profile name, Honestly, it just had me crying with laughter. And what was even better, I thought, oh, goodness, you know, I wonder if they created an actual account for her. And lo and behold, it does exist. So that's just, you know, it's just all these layers of deliciousness and wonderfulness. I think you can tell. I really, really enjoyed it. And I can't wait for the third one. I'm going to have to wait for the third one. It's due out in September. But I'm really, really excited. I have pre-ordered it already. And I can't, can't wait. He left us with a few tantalizing clues about what's going to be coming and the different character developments there will be in the next one. Honestly, I cannot recommend it enough. I think anyone will enjoy listening to it. But there is, it is very British and there are so many subtle cultural references that you might well, you will miss if you're not a Brit yourself. So there's there's a great enjoyment that you will get from it. But that added layer that you'll really only get if you're a Brit. It made me think because I have so many, so many of you out there, so many American friends. I did wonder whether um, an American would enjoy it. And I I do think they would, but it would be like me listening to something where there were all these really subtle American cultural references that would mostly pass me by, I think. But solid, solid recommendation. But that's about it, really. I'm just having a look at my notes. That's about it. Those were the things I wanted to tell you about, wanted to share with you. You know, when there's something that you just enjoy so much, you've got to tell your friends about it. Well, there you go. That's me. I wanted to tell you about it. And I wanted to give you something to listen to. I know there are many listeners out there who don't like listening to my updates, but well, they won't be listening anymore, will they? It's just you and I. Now, I thought I would give you a quote, an end quote, as it were, even though it's just the end of a not proper episode. But I looked through my list of quotes. This one, of course, came via James Clear. It's not actually a James Clear quote. It is a quote from a Buddhist monk. Now, I'm sure I'm going to absolutely mangle his name, but I'll give it a go. Thich Nhat Han. Apologies, Thich Nhat Han, if I absolutely just butchered your name. But here's the quote. When you are a young person... You are like a young creek and you meet many rocks, many obstacles and difficulties on your way. You hurry to get past these obstacles and get to the ocean. But as the creek moves down through the fields, it becomes larger and calmer and it can enjoy the reflection of the sky. It's wonderful. You will arrive at the sea anyway, so enjoy the journey. Enjoy the sunshine, the sunset, the moon, the birds, the trees and the many beauties along the way. 
taste every moment of your daily life. So I thought that was a nice one to leave you with. Hopefully you, like me, have the most beautiful weather. Blue skies, warm sunshine. The sea is perfection at the moment. It's just lovely. Such a wonderful environment to be in, to appreciate, to be grateful for. And I'm also very grateful for you. I hope you have a very lovely Easter weekend wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whomever you're doing it with. I will see you back here, same time, same place, next week. Until then, please take very, very good care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, Keto lovelies. Bye.